Hello and welcome back to the Suburban Chateau. My name is Stephanie Everett and today's episode is called Everything's Coming Up Roses, part one. And we're gonna have an Everything's Coming Up Roses part two as well. So for part one, um, we have a little bit of an exciting event coming up in our family and that is the marriage of my youngest daughter. And she's getting married in July and we've talked a lot about things we want to do for the wedding. And one of the things she really wanted was silk florals for the centerpieces and for the bridesmaids and for herself, for the boutonnieres. So me being crafty, I have taken on this task. So I found some amazing flowers. I'll tell you all about the flowers that I did find and very reasonably. And we're going to put together a centerpiece and we're going to also put together one of the bridesmaids bouquets. And um, I'm kind of excited to share with you some of these places that I've been finding all kinds of amazing flowers. So tonight is Everything's Coming Up Roses, part one. Well, today's vlog is called Everything's Coming Up Roses, part one. And in part one, we're gonna be working on making some floral centerpieces for my daughter's upcoming wedding. I already made her um, a prototype for one of the bridesmaids bouquets, but I also intend to make her bouquet and uh, all of the centerpiece arrangements as well as boutonnieres, corsages, it's a lot. And I'm very nervous about getting it right. <laughs> But um, I wanted to kind of just show you some of the flowers I would collected already. Um, and I've gotten them at a variety of sources. So I thought I'd just sort of go through um, each one of the styles. So definitely one of the jump offs is that we love this blush color of peony and we found this at TJ Maxx. And um, we definitely used it in the centerpiece for the wedding. I'll show you what that looks like in just a second here but um, also used it in all of the bouquets for the bridal party. Now, I recently uh, purchased some, also some more blush or pink peonies from Amazon, and I am gonna use these in the decor in uh, some way. I have two bunches of these, but I think I might use them more for the aisle. Uh, we have some benches to decorate, so I think those will be the bench decorations slightly they're just a slightly different cut of peony so i'm not going to mix them in with the ones from tj maxx the ones from tj maxx has incredible silk flowers and um silk flowers are just not what they used to be they are just so well made and incredible these days so um i'll just tell you some of my secret sources because i've got a bunch now these roses are sort of like an old fashioned rose. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna use them because they're just a little darker than all of the colors that we've selected for the wedding, but these may be filler roses later. I do love the color. So they're here, we may be using them and possibly filling them in some of the um, decorations, not necessarily the bouquets. These old fashioned roses came from TJ Maxx. Now this bowl is filled with all kinds of cream concoctions, all different sorts of cream colors. I have the cream old fashioned roses from TJ Maxx. They're about $10 a bundle and you get about 10 blooms in a bundle. That's kind of great. Um, so that would be this flower right here, the cream sort of an old fashioned rose. Next to it are these beautiful blush ranunculas. And uh, I wanted them as a filler flower for the centerpieces. They're a little smaller, but man, are they beautiful. And I'll get, you won't believe where I got them. These are Walmart and they're fantastic. And they have tons and tons of them and they're just pennies um, for a whole um, bunch like that. And I can use quite a few out of one bunch. I did get these smaller cream roses, more of like a rose bud. I'll see how I can use them, possibly with the corsages a little bit later as I get into that. Um, but those again were TJ Maxx, just about $10 a bundle. Now this beautiful burgundy rose has kind of been very elusive. And when you're seeing it on the camera, it is much redder than it is in person. It's much more of a dark burgundy. Um, and I'm just clueless on my iPhone how to get that color to be exactly true. Um, when I was showing my daughter, I was like, this is too red. It's really very, very dark burgundy. 
And I found the dark burgundy rose to be sort of elusive. I looked all over Hobby Lobby. I looked at TJ Maxx. I looked at Michaels. I looked at all my normal uh, spots for um, silk flowers. But I ended up getting this one at Walmart. They were per stem, I think two something per stem. I bought them out once and cleaned them out a second time. So they, they, they restock very quickly. But I'm just like super impressed with Walmart's silk flowers. Here's a little closer picture of that silk flower. I just don't know how you would get anything more beautiful than that. That's just so gorgeous to me. So tonight we're going to make as part of our everything's coming up roses we're going to be making some of the centerpieces for the wedding and um, my daughter has chosen um, a cream rose for some of her colors the blush color and we have the beautiful ranuncula right here that has the blush color and then the accent color is going to be this burgundy and they're going to be definitely in um, the girls bouquets as well but this is going to be kind of like one of the centerpieces. Um, the bottom part of it is a um, jar that I purchased at Hobby Lobby and it was for Valentine's Day. The cool thing about these jars is they have a lid on them that helps you with your flower preparation and helps the stems stay together. So it's pretty easy to put them together. I purchased the ribbon on Amazon. It was a uh, double-sided satin um, ribbon. I believe it's an inch and a half. And that's just sort of the final touches. So today I'm going to put together as many as I can and uh, we'll see how they turn out. So the very first thing I'm going to do, as I said before, I purchased the jars with the lids already on them from Hobby Lobby. They were in the Valentine's Day this year. I did trim some of these flowers back just a little bit. Um, this rose that I have in my hand is part of that bit larger rose that I got from Walmart that I was showing you. This is the smaller stem and this is the larger stem. And I think I'm going to go ahead and put a larger stem in with um, this cream rose, just to start off. We're going to get a couple things going here. And I'm going to also pull off the little extra leaves. And I might be able to use those later for some of the boutonnieres and things. So we sort of want that larger flower to be one of the centerpieces of this whole look. I'm going to take... Um, one of my bunches of peonies, these ones were from TJ's, and I'm going to get those pulled apart here. And I'm either going to use one or two. I set the original one I did right here so that I could sort of see what it looks like. So I'm going to pull these apart and get a couple stems, some of the nicer ones from this bunch. And I'm trying to keep my flowers somewhat organized as well as I do this. And I'm just going to pull maybe a couple inches off the bottom. So a little wire snips, trim that off. And let's see how that works height-wise. I think that a little bit, I could have a little bit more off that. Just a bit more. Okay. And what I did is I also kept a little um, wastebasket right under the table so that I can kind of control that as well so I don't have a mess as I'm going around making this. Okay, I'm going to move this one over. I have found that if I have for this bunch, I'm going to get one more peony um, for this one. And I have already pulled this one out and we're going to put it on the other side of this arrangement. So peony, peony, rose in the middle. Um, we'll again, cut off a little bit off the bottom of this one so it fits better in there. And again, just toss that right into my trash container so I can keep track of that. And um, so I've got um, the three started right here and I'm gonna add one more peony on this side. I'm trying to avoid too much symmetry. I know that sometimes in the realm of flower arranging, that's an issue that you're trying to keep it somewhat symmetrical or balanced, but not being a sleeve to that as well. Um, next thing I'm going to do is add the ranunculus. So I'm going to grab a couple of those 
I did notice that some of them have, again, I'm just pulling stickers off as I go. Some of them have sort of like a double stem. So I'm gonna grab one of those first. And I wanna have enough room if I need to fill it in or push it down in. And I'm gonna put it right between the peony and the old, the beautiful old fashioned rose. And I'm gonna put a single one, here's a single one on the other side. Again, not too symmetrical, but um, when I was a kid, my dad used to tell us all kinds of stories about, he worked for a flower shop. And so his, well, I know that was one of the things he talked about in the floral realm is they don't always want the sym symmetry. You have to have it looking a little bit more natural. So that ranunculus is gonna go in there. Now to all of this, I'm gonna try to get a little baby's breath to kind of go in as a filler, maybe down on this side and just sort of fill in some of the space. So this is what we've got so far. I'm thinking maybe just another little touch of the burgundy color and I had one cut. Where did you go? I think maybe on this side, we'll put that on this side to kind of fill in so that the baby's breath isn't taking over the whole bundle. And um, I'm pretty happy with that as sort of a one centerpiece look. And um, I'll, I'll just add on the ribbon. Now I'm kind of playing around with this a little bit to see where I think the front of this centerpiece is. And I'm gonna put the bow, I believe, somewhere between the bigger um, burgundy rose and the peony. And again, I just bought a big giant roll of 50 yards of um, the beautiful uh, burgundy satin ribbon. And the, the reason I got the idea for the burgundy ribbon, and I know it's not floral ribbon, but, um, and I'm just tying a very basic bow, just like you would in the back of a dress. Um, but I know I'm going to come down here so I can see what I'm doing. I once attended a wedding at, a, we're not far from Bedford Springs, um, hotel, which is a beautiful Omni resort hotel. And we, uh, my friend and I once played at a wedding and they had beautiful flowers that had been flown in from Belgium. And we were just stunned by this wedding's flowers and it was some people we knew and we were playing, we were playing the music for the wedding as well. And they had this ribbon, it was purple. It was like dark like this, but it was more of like a dark purple and it was an autumnal wedding. And they had that purple ribbon everywhere in the bathroom, hanging out the chandeliers and it was really, really beautiful. Now, so all I've done is made a simple bow. I'm gonna trim these little tails off later, but I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go back and get my better shears and um, I'll do a better job of that later. But I think for starters, now I can always push it and zhuzh it, but I think that's in pretty good shape. So now we just have to make about nine more. <laughs> wanted to share with everyone and I generally say this when I start a video I have absolutely zero experience doing any kind of flowers except just like normal cut flowers in the house so um, I'm sure you're gonna see me doing something wrong with this so I apologize in advance I'm doing the best I know how as a mom trying to help out her daughter with the wedding so um, it, it very well could be that this is, I'm doing this completely wrong and it's not balanced or something like this. It's just me doing the best as I can and seeing what looks good to me. And of course, every step of the way, I'm checking with my daughter to make sure she's happy as well. So um, that's the most important thing as well.
Now I wanted to show you one of the bridesmaids bouquets that I've already made and it's been approved by the bride. Um, we wanted something understated. The gowns are going to be burgundy and we really wanted something very, very understated but beautiful. We wanted to capture the blush color, the cream color of the roses and um, just like all the green fillers and things that go with it. So I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out. It was quite simple to assemble. I basically wrapped the stems of these silk flowers together with floral tape. And um, if you've never seen floral tape before, it looks like this, just to keep them together. And then once they were all bound with the flower, floral tape, I made sure that they were cut off at about the same length at the bottom. Um, I also used some different greens in these because my daughter wanted to kind of capture a little bit of almost a lamb's ear look. So I had these little, I found these greens that were um, a lamb's ear for filler. And um, I just put them together. This is, when I, back when I got married, you had to have a form of some sort, but I really prefer the bouquet look. And then all I did was wrap the floral tape with ribbon. I went down and back up and tied the ribbon. And this one's ready to go. And I'm still fluffing a bit, but it's it's ready to go. And it's just um, a few more flowers than the centerpieces, but I'm pleased with that. And we'll have two bridesmaids, a maid of honor, and of course the bride. And I won't share that flower arrangement, but it will be stunning as well. And I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Um, but this is uh, one of the bridesmaids bouquets. So there we go. Just one final note. The whole concept of doing your own flowers for a wedding seems very daunting. And I would just say, I hope that they're well received. They're certainly made with a lot of love and I've had a blast doing it. And I would just encourage you, if you wanna try something and save a few dollars in the process, I think this is one way to really um, have fun, get invested in um, the decorations and decor for your wedding. And uh, they're certainly gorgeous as well. So I just wanna encourage you to give it a whirl and give it a try. And uh, you might surprise yourself with what you can design in your mind's eye and the colors you can put together and the bows you can tie and all of the things you can put together to make your wedding special. Hope you got some great ideas from our video on how you can make simple centerpieces and have flowers in your home all throughout the year and they don't even die. They just get a little dusty, so keep them dusted. But um, our next everything coming up roses episode is going to be not about the silk flowers but about painting flowers and if you've been watching the suburban chateau lately you know that i've been getting into um, a little bit of the one stroke painting technique i've always loved tollware here's my my paintbrush container and i've painted that with some beautiful roses and i'm going to be talking about things that you can um, use to paint on and some simple techniques and uh, just kind of get you started being very crafty. I love painting. I have found it super satisfying and relaxing and I just have a great time with it. So um, stick, to, stick with us for the next Everything's Coming Up Roses, which will be about painting roses. Thanks again from the Suburban Chateau.